as what our intentions is to say, bro. All we need to do is, once we have it down, our policies, our intentions, our list of demands, and we have it down. Because remember, documentation supersedes conversation. Once we got it down, like, huh, this was what, this what we present. Now we coming in and we saying this is what this is what it is. We shown through analytics. That's what we got to start making sure that we shown through analytics. So. All this whole week, I got brothers signing up for whether it's voter registration, signing up. I got all the brothers doing that. So now when we take the data and we say, we got 2,000 brothers at our disposal, at our hand, on our side by side as allies. Now they like, okay, because that's all they understand. They don't understand the hopes and the dreams and the possibilities. No, they understand analytics and data. That's why Facebook is one of the most powerful companies because it retains all of the data. Once we gain that data, bro, and we show this is what we're able to do, this is what we're able to build, then we become undeniable. So now when we go in this city, this meeting, we got two, three thousand signatures of brothers that's ready to do whatever we need to do. Come on, man. That's what organization is. When we created this Fab Week, man, this is not about something to say, let me put myself as the face or the forefront of any of this. My main thing is to say, if I'm going to be a face, something that is recognizable. Let me be a voice of the village. Let me be something and speak in the echoes of what represents the reflection of our people, our community, where we come from, what we come from. Me coming up, growing up, walking to this store every morning, man, with notes in my hand from my mama, saying, man, can I get five dollars worth of chicken? We pay you Friday. We do this, we do that. These, this is what this was a reflection of and, re and represents. When me and my sister have been putting on these events for the past 20 years right here on this corner, when I've, when I've, when I've held victims of gun violence in my arms, watching some of my childhood friends die in my arms, reminiscing of watching going up in this block where I've lost over five friends who I've grown up with, who used to ask my mama, can I spend a night at your house? Watching them brothers die on this street right here. My childhood memories, watching many of my friends' innocence be stripped on this corner. A lot of things, a lot of the stuff that I wrote about, a lot of stuff coming right here to this corner. This is only the beginning of what, to me, is the, is the recognition of somebody that comes from the village that's reclaiming our village. And that's what's important to us right now is when we begin to start reclaiming our village and saying, we're not gonna allow what's been happening to our village. We're not gonna allow us to be hating on each other and build on that. We're gonna say, bro, how can we build? How can we build? What can we do? This brother right here in his organization is getting brothers out of all my people that come out of jail or come home or just need some assistance, I shoot them to him. He's got several of my friends, Jobs. This brother right here has been a pillar in the community, man, from uh, all kind of levels of, of whatever type of intentional demonstrations of brotherhood and power that we represent. This brother and his organization have been there. It's countless faces that's out here that have, that play a, 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 a super huge role in us identifying with what's going on in our community today. A lot of things happen. We go to these city council meetings and the biggest conundrum that I see is that they make decisions about us without us. We'll show up to everything that has no value to it. But we don't show up to things that's valuable to us. When we begin to start showing up to these places in numbers, in droves, letting our representation be the fact that we stand in behalf of our village. I'm from this neighborhood right here, but Oakland is my whole neighborhood because I represent for this village. I represent as a member of the tribe of Oakland, and I'm going to continue to keep representing that, and I'm going to voice that opinion every city, every state, every country, every place that I step into. When I represent, when I'm on the news, and they like, like, why you be up there trying to talk white? That's not talking white. We can like, we got to stop associating intelligence and being able to articulate with Caucasian descendants. We built the first... Well, we built the first university. We are reflections of that. Yeah. Our ability to code switch, our ability to articulate, to be able to say a language to individuals that don't understand what's going on in this village. If we have those that speak, then you go represent for us. You go talk. And it's happened for times and times before where certain individuals will say, bro, you better with them words than me. Language is life. And every level in life, you understand that there is a language that you must understand. Your language is your password.
For every level in life you get to, there is a new language. If we shooting dice right here on the corner, we know dice game slang. But that dice game slang will get you lost money when you go to Vegas. Trying to use that same, man, I said caught them. What caught them mean? <laughs> what that mean? You learn your language. School them. You can't tell Vegas, school them. What? What do you mean? At the end of the day, man, every level of life, there's a new language. And as we begin to start figuring out the languages on the level that we are on, we can raise and build our people up. My brother right here has created this brother right here. Besides my big brother right here, Gino, who is one of my mentors, my brother Blow, a mentor, my uncle, all of these brothers that represent this community, TV, all of you brothers that represent real North Oakland, G30, and all my folks, these are pioneers who I watched growing up, man, who had their own situations going on in these streets. But them dudes have always, always protected my essence of that, of just saying, blood. Keep doing your thing, little cuz. Keep doing your thing, little bruh. Get off this like you feel me, you ain't on this. And I love y'all for that. All my big homies, I love y'all for that. Who represent our focus. This brother right here, that I mean behind him, right here has created a technology. If y'all can, if y'all all got iPhones or smartphones, can you share that link? Can you airdrop that link to some of these brothers? You can just download Black Terminus AR in the, in the mobile app. I'm good with words, and I don't even know how to spell terminus. <laughs> off, off freestyle, <laughs> off freestyle. I don't like, I'm trying, but what what it is? Why I'm at? Why I'm saying this is because he has created this augmented reality technology. A, a, a black tech designer who has gone all around the world with this technology. What he has created is he brings these pictures and these murals to life. So if you have this app, it'll bring this picture to life. And these are things that we're doing. And uh. This, this brother's a genius right here, man. This, this guy is a, 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 a multi-billionaire mind, man. And, and his technology that he's doing will advance many of us. And we have to learn how to start intertwining them beyond art. Beyond art, when we're doing our mental health things, when we're doing this, you know, being a statistician on our well-being of what we have going on. I want to introduce the brothers that were responsible for this painting and for this mural. Um, Dre and Steven, can you guys come up here real quick? Uh... Yeah. This is my brother, man, my, my, my brother Dre, man. Dre is a, uh, Dre is just a, man, he's just, he's, a, he's just a good brother, man. This dude is, uh, he reached out to me about a year ago, and he said, uh, brother Steve, bro, thank you. Okay. He reached out to me about a year ago, and he was like, man, find me a wall. And I, and I was like, find you a wall, what you need? He said, man, find me a wall, man, and I just want to, I want to do a mural for you. And, um. Man, the, 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 the brother, uh, my brother's at the store, man, that we've grown up with. We watch, hey, dude, we watch, we, we, these, these, I went to them and I said, bro, can we use the side of the wall to do this mural? And they like, man, Bab, you could do it, man, but you gotta, it gotta be something that's a reflection of, you know, our city in Oakland. I say, well, shit, I'm a reflection of the city of Oakland, man, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Especially around these parts, man, and uh, on all levels. But we left an area on this side my sister lost her son to victims of violence, to a victim of violent crime. And on this side right here, we made a promise that I would leave space for my sister to put my nephew right here on this side. And we're making a vow that next month we're gonna do to women that have lost their sons and men that have lost their sons or daughters to victims of violence. We're gonna do a super huge Valentine's Day celebration for them giving out roses and feeding them. And I want to ask all of the brothers to be a part of that in the community because this is where it starts. We can't say that we stand up men if we ain't protecting our women. Because mm. everybody right here has been, only got here through a woman. So we got to be able to stand up and stand by side by them and letting them know how powerful it is. But with no further ado, man, I want to give it to these brothers, man. And uh, just you tell them. You did all the work. <laughs> I just, I just, I just want to tell y'all, thank y'all, thank y'all for, for it, it's a, it's a beautiful portrait, um, to be, to be immortalized through pictures, man. As we kick off Fab Week, man, thank y'all so much. Let's just, let's, let's get some pictures. If y'all can download that technology so you can see it. Nice, thank you so much to my brothers. That is all of us a none. Thank y'all so much for coming out. Y'all represent a big part of the community too, as well as helping brothers get back and get on the right side of right with the reentry programs. Thank y'all so much. Um, and like I say, man, even though this is me, this is us. It's a lot of me-ism in this world. And we gotta get back to us-ism. We gotta get back to we-ism. And that we-ism is what are we doing to make a, re a reflection and an impact of our communities? How can we rebuild? 
How can we come back in in the areas that they say is the darkest and the most desolate and we give life back to? What's happening is in these city council meetings, they figuring out ways on how they can give money to individuals that's not even boots on the ground. They say they giving millions of dollars away, y'all, to do the work that we do on a regular. Where you intervene, hold on, bro, hold on, that's my homie, y'all, that's my folks, son. Wait a minute, let's put it together. That violence prevention, all of these things where we stepping up, where when we was young, we like, man, that's police work. Nah, this ain't police work. This community work. This community work of our village. We gotta start learning the languages so we can learn how to identify with what's going on, because if not, we are gonna get tricked out of our purposes. And we are gonna get tricked out of our situations being the fact of we'll start wording things wrong. And in the wording of that, nigga be like, bro, you out there doing cop work. No, I'm not, brother. I'm not arresting nobody. I'm not putting no dirt on nobody. And nor neither am I sharing information with the legal system. I'm in here to intervene for the purpose of my village being, you know, saying back productive. So once we start learning that, man, it's a whole nother budget that they got for us, man, to be able to say. Imagine if they gave us brothers money to go in in these communities and rebuild our communities. That same money that they give in these other organizations, that could be dumped back into us. This is the game that they don't want us to know because they going out taking the same money and utilizing it to push us further out of the communities that we in. I remember growing up here, all of this was this was all black owned. This was all all of this was stuff was somewhere we like this brother right here with the tax company might be the only black business that has with, withstood all of these changes. But we got to get back to understanding these languages so we can say, hold on, man. Oh, I don't need this much money to buy a house. We start sharing that knowledge with each other, man, and we keep building and we make each other tough. Like I say, man, I'm not here to save the world. I'm not here to do none of that, but I am here to show my folks, bro, it can be done. We can change some narratives. We can do something different. We can be able to get our followers while we alive, man. We can be able to say, blood, look what we doing, bro. And I ain't gotta, I ain't gotta do no ass kissing. I ain't gotta do no selling out. I ain't gotta do none of that. I can still stand high with my integrity and my head up high, knowing I ain't did one ounce of sucker shit. Right. And still standing here, man. I love y'all so much, y'all. I love y'all. Let's keep building. As this, as we kick off this fan week, man. I hope to see y'all at some of the events. Max, how you doing, brother? Good to see you out here. You feel me? As we kick off some of these events, let's just come out and let's show, man, that we could come together in our community. If you have an opportunity to, to come step out to any one of the events, come out, man. Come share it and let's show them, man, that we could put it together. H, what's up, baby? Let's keep rocking, man. I love y'all so much. Steve, Dre, I love y'all so much. Take as many pictures as we can and let's take it to that next level. Man, the air away. Love y'all. My auntie Desi, she came to Vegas, but she's staying in Vegas. H, what's up, man? She buddy? called me up up, and she said, Tony. Come get Petey so I can go gamble. So I ran down to the Hard Rock, grabbed Petey. I said, come on, bro. I took him straight to the trap. Back then, I was into my thing. We get to the trap. I grab a bundle and throw it to him and say, roll up, guys. And he said, I don't smoke. I said, what? He said, especially that bullshit. Because I was rolling that brown weed back then. It was big out there in Vegas, right? So I'm like, all right, then, nigga. Go ahead and get your house alone, nigga. You can have the trap. Nigga, make a couple of dollars. He's like, nah, man, I'ma sit here and rap. I'ma sit here and write. Sit right? What's about to write? He said, man, I'ma be a rapper. 